to any of you who have lived in or visited New York City, these sites might start to look familiar. This is Central Park, one of the most beautifully designed public spaces in America. But to anyone who's never physically been to the park, well, these images can only convey so much. Because to really experience Central Park, you really have to be there. Well, the same could be said of the music you're hearing right now. That's because this music was not only composed, but also mapped for Central Park. I'd like to close this incredible evening by telling you a little bit about the work that my brother and I are doing, specifically about a concept that we've been exploring over the last few years, this idea of location-aware music. So my brother and I, we've been working together since we were, well, we were kids. That's us there, both of us, actually. But in recent years, so we're musicians and we're sound artists, and in recent years, we've become more and more interested in projects that are at that nexus of art and technology, with a specific focus on sound. Whether that be multi-channel sound installations throughout an entire building, or engineering a live concert that is interactive. But tonight I want to focus on this idea that we've been exploring, this idea of music that is sonically mapped to a physical space. But before I unpack that a little bit, let me go back and tell you how this kind of started. My brother and I were living in New York when the artists Christo and Jean-Claude staged their temporary installation, The Gates, in Central Park. Hundreds of these brightly colored sculptures decorated in the park in Manhattan for a number of weeks. And unlike work that was exhibited in a more neutral environment, like on the walls of a gallery or, or a museum, this work was really in dialogue with this physical space. And in a lot of ways, the gates seemed like a celebration of Frederick Olmsted's incredible design. This was an experience that stayed with us, and years later, my brother and I, we moved back to our hometown of Washington, D.C. And we began this question, we began asking, would it be possible in the same way that the gates interacts and responds to the physical layout of the park to compose music for landscapes? That question led us to this. On Memorial Day, we released the National Mall. The National Mall is a location-aware album released exclusively as a mobile app that uses the device's built-in GPS functionality to sonically map the entirety of the park in downtown Washington, D.C. Hundreds of musical nodes are geotagged throughout the space so that as the listener traverses the landscape, a musical score is actually unfolding around them. So this is not a, a static playlist of songs or songs intended for the park, but rather an array of distinct melodies and rhythms that fit together like pieces of a puzzle and that blend seamlessly based on the listener's chosen trajectory within the park. So think of this as a choose-your-own-adventure of an album. I'll give you an example of how this works. So as you're approaching the base of the Washington Monument, you're hearing the sound of instruments warming up. Keep walking and you hear the sound of a single Mellotron spelling out a very simple melody. Walk further still and you hear the sound of sweeping violins. Keep moving and a choir joins in. Until you finally reach the top and you're standing next to this giant obelisk that punctuates the center of the park and you're hearing sounds of fireworks and drums and all sorts of musical cra craziness, as if all of these sounds are radiating out from the center of the park. But were you to walk in the opposite direction, this entire sequence happens in reverse. And if you actually exit the perimeter of the park, the music fades to silence and the play button actually disappears. And this has been the trickiest thing to explain. Occasionally we get contacted by people in other parts of the world that want to hear this music, that request a CD or MP3 version of what we're doing. And what we have to explain is that this is not a promotional app or a game to accompany a traditional album release. No, the app is the work itself, and the architecture of the landscape is intrinsic to the listening experience. Six months later, we actually had the opportunity to release an app for Central Park, a park that's twice the size of the National Mall, 
with music and audio tagged throughout from the Ramble to the Sheep's Meadow to the Reservoir. And last year, we worked out of California beginning a long-term project uh, of mapping the entirety of Highway 1 in California. And in addition to being here for this incredible TEDx event, we've spent the last four days exploring Jackson and the parks surrounding here to see if, with your support, this is something that we could bring here eventually. Yes. So what we're doing integrating GPS into audio is just one idea, but it speaks to a larger vision for a music industry that sometimes struggled to find its footing in this digital age, that they begin to see these new technologies not as ways to add bells and whistles to an existing model, but to dream up entirely new ways for people to interact with and experience music. Thank you so much. Thank you.